Hi guys, welcome to Toots Online. Today I'm going to take you through the blood supply of the small intestine and large intestine. Let's start off with the small intestine first. Here we have our abdominal aorta, our superior mesenteric artery, and our inferior mesenteric artery. Coming off this superior mesenteric artery, we have our inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery. And this is supplying the pancreas and the duodenum. Then we have our jejunal arteries. And our ileal arteries. Supplying the jejunum and the ileum. So the superior mesenteric artery supplies all of the small intestine. The superior mesenteric artery also has branches which supply parts of the large intestine and these are the middle colic artery the right colic artery And the iliocolic artery. Coming off the iliocolic artery, we have the appendicular artery. So the superior mesenteric artery supplies both the small intestine and some parts of the large intestine. And these parts are the cecum and the appendix, the ascending colon and the transverse colon. Move on to our inferior mesenteric artery now and this is what supplies the rest of the large intestine including the upper part of the rectum. First branch we have is the left colic artery Then we have the sigmoid artery and finally the superior rectal artery. And these are supplying the descending colon, the sigmoid colon and the superior part of the rectum. Connecting each of these branches of the superior and the inferior mesenteric arteries is the marginal artery. And the marginal artery allows communication between the inferior and superior mesenteric arteries.
So finishing the supply of the large intestine, here we have our inferior mesenteric artery. And our superior rectal artery. And then we have the abdominal aorta here and one of our common iliac arteries. Branching off this, we have the internal iliac artery. And this is branching into the internal pudendal artery and the middle rectal artery. Coming off the internal pudendal artery, we have the inferior rectal artery. The superior rectal artery supplies the rectum and the anus up until the level of the valves. The middle rectal artery supplies the muscle of the lower rectum and the inferior rectal artery supplies underneath the level of the valves. Okay, now we'll move on to the drainage of the small and large intestine. And this is via the portal vein. The portal vein is formed when the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein join. Draining the small intestine, we have the pancreaticoduodenal vein, as well as the jejunal and the ileal veins. Draining the large intestine, we have the middle colic vein, the right colic vein, the iliocolic vein, and the appendicular vein. The middle colic vein drains the transverse colon. The right colic vein is draining the ascending colon. The iliocolic vein is draining the cecum and the appendicular vein is draining the appendix. Draining the rest of the large intestine is the inferior mesenteric vein which is joining the splenic vein. And this collects blood from the left colic veins the sigmoid veins and the superior rectal veins. The rest of the rectum 
and the anal canal are drained by a plexus. called the rectal venous plexus. And there's an internal and an external plexus. And this plexus drains into the internal iliac vein and the internal pudendal vein. These drain into the systemic circulation. And that about wraps it up for the blood supply of the small intestine and the large intestine. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. Make sure you visit our website or subscribe if you want to learn more about the human body. Thanks and I'll see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.